On today's flip, I'm going to show you how you can recreate some of those fancy dining room tables that you see online for a fraction of the cost. Stay tuned. I took a visit to my local thrift store and found this massive dining room table tucked in a corner. All six of the chairs were still with it and they were in really great shape. They had it marked down to $130. I've been on a hunt for a new dining room table for my own space, so I grabbed it and today I'm going to show you how you can turn this old table into quite the showstopper. This massive table is in really great shape. It came with six chairs, two leaves, and a double pedestal base. The chairs have light brown velvet padding that are actually in still really great condition. The top of the table has some failing finish, but that's okay. I'm gonna strip all of this back anyways, and it'll take care of all of that. All six of the chairs had cane webbing on the back. None of it was out of place. None of it had holes. It was in perfect shape. Really excited to give this guy a good flip. First thing I need to do is take the seat cushions off these chairs and set them aside for a good cleaning in just a little bit. Upon further inspection, I found a maker's mark for these chairs and plenty of clues that this was made in 1975. Really do not like these gold dated detail pieces on the bottom. And these are already starting to come off, so that tells me all I need is this little trusty tool right here. I'll link this in my Amazon shop below. And I should be able to lift all of these off really easily. Removing dated details like these is usually really easy to do and can help modernize your piece of furniture. I've included the tack lifter that I'm using to remove these in the video description below. Now that I've taken my chairs apart, it's time to get everything clean. I'm using my good old standby simple green and a bucket of warm water. This will help me get off years of grease, grime, and dust, and anything else that's accumulated on this table that will get in the way from my paint adhering nicely. I'll give everything a good scrub and then go over it again with some warm water to make sure that all my cleanser is removed. I'm going to use my Bissell Revolution and it has the uh, pet stain tool as the attachment and this one has little grippers on the inside that are going to catch all of the pet hair that's on these cushions. Uh, my family is really sensitive to cat hair and it looks like these people had a cat by looking at the back of this. So I'm going to make sure I do a really good job scrubbing this and getting these nice and clean so that we can actually keep them in our house. I 
I've got the solution that came with my Bissell steam cleaner in the machine and I'll give each seat cushion two good passes to make sure that they're nice and clean. With the attachment that's on here currently, it should lift up all of this pet hair. I use these on my own couches with all of my furry friends and it does a really good job making it look like they're brand new again. And this is why it's so important to clean your chairs. This part is so gross yet so satisfying. I love to see how much dirt this thing sucks up. Now that they've all been steam cleaned and they look nice and fresh, I let them sit in the garage so they could dry overnight. While those seat cushions are drying, I'll get back to work on the table. I've got my Gorilla Wood Filler to fill in the little nail holes from removing those gold plates. When this is done, it'll look like they were never even there. Now it's time for the hardest part of this flip. The entire top of this table needs to be stripped. I'm going to remove this old finish and update it with a stain that's more on trend. First thing I'll do is cover the entire table with some clean strip furniture stripper. I'll apply a thick layer of this and then I'll cover it with some plastic wrap so that it can process and not dry out. It's really important that you wear gloves and a mask while you apply this. While the chemical stripper processed, I sanded down the pedestals of the table and the little holes I patched with wood fill. It was nice to be able to work on other things while I was waiting on other parts of this project to either process or dry. This was a really big project for me and it probably took me five days total to refinish, but the results were totally worth it and I cannot wait to show you what this looks like now. I let the quick strip process for one hour and started to remove the saran wrap on the top. I like to do small portions of this at a time because with the Texas heat, it just dries out way too fast on me. Plus it makes a nice little catch all on the plastic wrap for all the stripper gunk that I get off of the table.
Now that I've gotten up all of the chemical stripper that I could with the plastic scraper, I'll use some mineral spirits and some fine steel wool to neutralize the chemical stripper and help remove any of the extra gunk that's still left on the top. And as always, you have gotta wear your gloves and mask during this part as well. I am exhausted. This was a long day of work on this table. Now I just need to let it dry overnight and come back and sand off the rest of the finish that's left. Today I've set aside the entire day just to start sanding this project. I'll start with all six of the chairs and give them a nice scuff sand to get them ready for paint. I'm using a 180 grit sand pad on my surf prep sander. This cane was in really great shape. I just used a gentle pressure to go over the tops of these just in case. Now that my chairs have had a good scuff sand, I'll use my air compressor to blow off all the extra sanding dust and then I'll have to go over these again with some warm water just to make sure that all of the dust has been removed before I can start painting. I know sometimes this seems like a really long drawn out process and it can be, but the return I'm gonna get on this investment is gonna make it well worth it. <sighs> Woo! I've gotten a lot of this sanded already. So what I'm doing is taking a 120 grit sanding pad, getting off the rest of the finish that my stripper didn't remove, and then I'll work my way up the grits so that I have a nice smooth finish at the end. I used my Makita Orbital Sander and it actually made pretty quick work of this now that I had most of the finish removed by my chemical stripper. Now that I've got the first round sanded off, I'm gonna use an old carpenter's trick while I take a carpenter's pencil and I'm gonna make a mark all the way through the table and I'm gonna work my way up my grits to make sure I have a smooth surface, but making sure that the pencil mark is gone ensures that I've gotten everything covered. This pencil trick will also ensure that you get out any pigtails that your orbital sander leaves behind. So I went from a 120 grit to a 180 to a 220 for a smooth finish. So I used the air compressor to get all the dust off. I took a rag and wiped off anything that was left on the surface. And then I'll do some due diligence and take a tack cloth just to make sure that everything is completely done and gone before I put the stain on. For the top of the table, I've chosen to use Minwax Performance Series Wood Stain. This is an oil-based stain, and originally I wanted something light like a paint wash, but I was worried to do a paint wash because we use our dining table so often. I'm always hosting family dinners or girls' nights or something like that, so it gets a lot of use that I really wasn't wanting to touch up paint continuously. So I'm gonna go with something a little more durable and use this stain. 
This Minwax water-based stain is in the color Birch Bark, and if you're a regular on my channel, you've seen me use these stains a handful of times now. I'm always surprised on how pigmented they look in the can, yet they leave a really beautiful light finish, and it's buildable on whatever project you're working on. I put a thick coat of this stain on, I let it set on for about 30 seconds and then wiped it back. I ended up doing three coats of this total to get the look that I was going for. So far I've gotten three coats of that uh, whiter stain on top of this table and I'm going to show you guys what it looks like because it's not as creamy or as white as you think it's going to be. It just sort of neutralizes that red and the yellow tones that are in the tabletop and it makes it just more of a creamy color without looking like it's been paint washed. So it's really interesting what it looks like. But it had to dry completely overnight and then I'm going to use my Win Minwax one coat polyurethane. This acts like three coats of poly in one and so your table has to be completely dry before you use this and it recommends that you put it on with a brush. It is a water-based product so it'll clean up easy with any soap and water. If you've made it this far in my video, I'm hoping that you've learned something along the way. And if you're enjoying this furniture flip, would you do me the hugest favor and hit that like button, maybe even that subscribe if you'd like to see some more. Leave me a comment below on your thoughts on today's project. I would love to hear them. I respond to every single comment that I can. I just appreciate you guys being here with me and sharing my passion for flipping some furniture. color I'm going classic black in Sherwin-Williams tricorn black in their emerald urethane trim paint. This emerald trim paint in a satin finish is a water-based paint. I'll load it into my gravity fed HVLP spray gun. I always run it through a strainer first just to make sure I get out any of the clumps that won't go through the spray gun well and then I'm ready to go. So my husband made me the coolest Lazy Susan to put the chairs on so that they can spin around while I paint them and it makes my job so much easier. I did a total of two coats of this black paint on the chairs with two hour dry time in between for full coverage. Can't forget about those pedestal bases. One of the last steps is to paint the apron of this table. I don't want to risk getting any paint onto my perfectly polyed top, so I'm taking some painter's tape and some butcher paper to cover everything up well.
The secret to these perfectly edged curves is to overhang the tape a little bit and then take a razor blade to make it flush with the edge. I'll go all around the table and do this so I have a perfect line of demarcation between the stain and the black paint. Now that I've got the top of the table wrapped up nicely, it's time to apply two good coats of black paint to the apron. I bet you can't tell that this is my favorite part, or I'm just getting really close to being done with this project, so I am equally excited about that. My chairs are dry, they've had two coats of paint, and now it's time to zip back in my extra clean cushions. Okay, final step to ensure the top of this is perfect. I take a folded up paper bag and go across the entire top. It acts like an 800 grit piece of sandpaper to ensure that the surface is really smooth. So let me give you the breakdown on today's flip. I spent $130 on the table from the thrift store and I've got about $40 invested between the can of stain and the can of black paint. I'm gonna round up all my supplies to be about 30 bucks out of pocket since I had to use so much chemical stripper. I already had everything in my garage except for that stain color, so I did save some money without having to go buy all of those new products. But all in all, I figured between everything that I spent on the new paint and the table and you know using the supplies that I had, I'm about $200 out. So that is a fraction of the cost with some of these dining tables that I've been seeing online. Not too bad. You've hung on for this full process and I can't wait to show you the after, but here's a reminder of the dining room table that I picked up from the thrift store with six rattan chairs from 1974, and here is its after. I am absolutely in love with the look of this table in my dining room space. I was desperately in need of an upgrade and I couldn't have been more thrilled with how this one turned out. The neutral velvet cushions, the perfect cane webbing on the back mixed with the beige wash stain on the top really elevated this guy to the next level. What do you all think of today's flip and what do you think this would have cost me if I purchased it at a furniture store? Leave me a comment below, I would love to know. 
Thank you so much for tuning in and sticking with me. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already so you never miss a flip. And I'll see you next time on Lemons to Lemonade Furniture.